Hey guys, how are you all today? I hope everybody can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you can hear me and tell everybody where you're from because you never know. Person next to you, you might find somebody new to stitch with. You might somebody find somebody new to digitize with. You never can tell. So sound is good today. Oops, my I've got my table jiggling. Oops, sorry about that. So first question was about scan a cat mats and what combination mat blade okay i do not have my blades here so i can't I, they're in the other room and i didn't think of this soon enough so we're going to talk about what i personally do now is this totally broken brother recommended thanks for telling me sounds good you never know around here lately the sound have been going crazy um this is what I personally do. There are certain things that brother recommends, certain things that I recommend, but I'll tell you how I do my own personal stuff. If I am cutting fabric that does not have a backing on it that I have stiffened, I will use my fabric blade, my fabric mat, and my fabric blade. They are both color coded gold. And the key word there was my fabric is stiffened. Because when I lift it off, it's going to stretch if it's not stiffened and it needs to be stiffened well. So that, that is, that, that's the main thing that I use my fabric mat for. Having said that, if I have a heavy duty wool that I'm going to use to cut something out of and I want to cut it, um, not, not a, um, loose, not a loosely woven wool, but like a thick, dense wool, if I'm doing that with my rotary auto blade, I will use my fabric mat because it's not going to shred on me. And I'm, you know, it's, it's going to hang in there. If, and, and I mean, that, that would be, that's, those are the main reasons I use my fabric mat. I never use it when I'm cutting an applique unless my fabric is stiffened and does not have a backing on it. OK, that is, you know, it's the fabric has to be stiffened. I like to cut my applique's face up. So having if I do that, my backing is going to stick to that mat. And that is a mess and that you don't want to deal with. If you decide you must cut your fat, your um, applique's upside down, then you can use your fabric mat because the fabric mat is going to grip that fabric the best. Okay. Um, so for instance, if you are a steam seam and I'm no association to steam a seam company or the warm company, none of that. If you are a steam a seam person, then uh, it's the steam a seam light, the stuff that the, the two, that stuff that's tacky, cut it face down and use your fabric mat because otherwise it's going to peel up and it's going to stick to your mat. It's just going to be ugly. If you are a Floriani applique wonder user or the Jenny Haskins, whatever her brand of that is, that is a double stick as well. That is one of those that I will use on my fabric mat and I will cut face down. I don't use those products very often, just so you know, but that is, that would be your fabric mat face down, leave the paper on the product. I, now, personally, Steam Seam 2, I don't use it all. That's not something that I like because even if I leave the paper on, the paper get, doesn't stay on and it just kind of makes a mess. If I'm cutting an applique with the Brother Fusible or um, I like, there's a Bosal Fusible that I really, really like because it's lightweight and it does not change the drape of the fabric. I use, and this is not technically recommended, I use my standard mat. I peel the paper off the back of it, but you have to make sure that you have fused your fusible into that well. So when you've ironed it and you see that it was ironed, and you think it's you think it's on there go ahead and hit it with the iron again on any of your fusibles because if it's not fused to there well enough it will stay on your mat because you peel the paper off you place it face up on the mat and you use your fabric blade that's how i do it having said that if you are using uh 
heat and bond ultra, you're not going to use your fabric blade. You're going to have it because it's too thick. Um, I, the lighter weight ones you can use your fabric blade with and it doesn't sound as ucky and it doesn't, it, it cuts a nice finer detail. Okay. Technically the fabric blade is for fabric without a backing, but we have through years of use, this is what I do. Standard mat, my backing on my fabric face up on the mat with the paper peeled off of it, but make sure that it is well fused. If it's not, the fusible is going to be on your mat and there's nothing going to be on the back side of your fabric and it's not going to cut well. Um, also, I use the standard mat for a lot of my rotary auto blade stuff. <clears throat> if it's shifting on my low tack mat, then I use it, use it on the standard mat. The, um, my low tack mat is for my papers. Sometimes my, um, what am I trying to say? Paper backing. Um, give me having a brain fart. Um, adhesive. Okay. <laughs> your, your adhesive transfers. I'll, I will use my low tag mat or my standard mat. Um, I will, I use my vinyl auto blade for that just simply because it gives, gives you a much more delicate cut. It is the finest blade that we have and it does a very nice delicate cut. Low tack mat is generally you're going to be your paper because you don't want it stuck like Chuck, but you're, I always ensure that my, my item is going to be stuck there by using paper tape with my mat. So I will tape the edges of the pro, of the item down and I cut small pieces first, large pieces last, but you want to go inside to outside. Otherwise it will shift on you. Um, low tack mat. I also use with my rotary auto blade for um, laces. Uh, some of my more delicate fabrics, like uh, what am I trying to think of? I'll do laces. I'll do like the sequined knit. So you know, anything that's real delicate that I'll use my low tack mat with my rotary auto blade. Make sure that you bray it down on there. But what I'll tell you is test. You know, if you try it and you don't, you don't find that you like it, then try to try it on a different mat. There is no right or wrong except for do not put a fusible face down with face the fusible side to that fabric mat because you're never going to get it off and you have ruined your mat. Those are my basic tips and tricks. And that is for Margaret. Next question up today was um, how to, and this actually came in last week and I didn't see it in time. Uh, well, Kelly, I'd love to come to your sewing room and play. Uh, somebody should be enjoying it. Well, I would love for somebody to come clean my mess up. I have the biggest mess in here and I keep start. I've been organizing fabrics and the other room just looks absolutely, totally nasty. Um, and the dog decided I was wrapping my fabrics in, I was wrapping them all up nice and pretty, making them sure they were all the right sizes. And um, I had left a piece of silk, $20 a yard silk, if not more, laying on the floor, nice and wrapped up along with a piece of cardboard. The dog decided that's the day she wants to chew fabric. She never chews anything. She ate my, she gave me some textured silk. She was not, it, she's not a good girl for that one. So anyhow, <clears throat> all right. Uh, the next one was how to convert parts of a design to an applique similar to what we have built into the luminaire. Is there a way to do that? Yes, but it really is design dependent. Okay. Just like it is on the luminaire, it is going to be design dependent. So we have people from New Zealand and from, uh, and from Germany today. Welcome. Okay, so let me go over to uh, share screen and let's go here and screen two and share. Hey, Leanne, how are you to do today? And so Australia is in the house as well. NP design, let's look at, let's look at a design. I'll have to look and see what we have here. I'm not sure what I've got. 
Let's go to our design library and let's get out of animals because though, none of those are going to do well. All right, let's look at our florals. <clears throat> so let's say we've got this little bit and it is teeny tiny. So let me change to a default hoop so that you can see it. This one, the yellow color would definitely not be an optimal one to cut because the, I mean, to turn into an applique because that yellow center there has those running stitches across it. Your flowers may or may not work. Let's see what we can do. So the first thing that you would do in P design is divide by color. And then anything that you want to try to convert to an applique, we're going to select it and we're going to convert it to outline and we're going to convert whole to outline so that it turns that entire circle into an outline. Okay. So now we're going to go over to our home tab and choose our applique wizard. And right there is the applique wizard. Oh, I hold on a second, guys. Let me change my mouse shape for you. I forgot I went back to small mouse so that I could work. Let me make it bigger. Where is it? Mouse settings. Pointers. Pointer option. Let's make this bigger. Well, I'd be darned. I can't find where I did that the last time. Evidently, it's not going to let me do that today. Pointer size and color. There we go. Let's make it bigger. Well, fiddle dee dee. What happened there? Okay, so now I have a big honking mouse. Applique wizard was right there. Sorry about that one. And you want to choose replace. You don't want to add it. You want to replace it. Add it's going to go around the whole thing. You can choose this type of tack down stitch that you want. I usually like a zigzag stitch and choose your width. In general, never go below 2.5. Go ahead and click OK and there's your applique. So for that particular design, not, not the greatest, but it works. Okay. Having said that, let's go pick something that's not going to work very well. Come in here. Actually, this one might not do too bad either. Let's go to stitches, divide by color, and then let's grab one of the colors. You want to convert it to outline. We're going to convert whole to outline. There, so you see how now it's just a fill stitch. Then you can go home, applique wizard, make sure replace is selected, and click OK. That has now been turned into an applique. And your traveling stitches would go underneath it. So that's not a huge deal. Let's find one that won't do well. <laughs> well, there you go, Leanne. I found you a blossom. It's in PE Design right there. You've got two sections of them. There's one and there's the other coordinating item. So you got two right there, Japanese blossom. The replace do. Okay, so let me show you the difference. If I do the applique wizard right now, you'll notice that add is not allowed. Replace is the only thing. Oh, excuse me. That replace is not allowed. Add is the only thing. It adds it around the exterior of the design. So it's like creating a patch for it. If I did the same thing, let's come in here and bring that back in. And let's say divide by color and select the, that color, convert whole to outline. Now let's go back home, applique wizard. If I choose replace instead of add, it's going to add it from the outside area. So notice, oops, did I say replace? I meant to say add, hold on. If I say add, it's going to go around the exterior of that design like creating a patch. If I choose replace, it turns that actual shape that we were looking at into an applique. 
and the add lets you choose how far away from the original pattern you want it to be. So replace is going to totally replace it with an applique itself. Okay. Well, that's the difference between the two. In BES, this is not going to be as easy. Let's go home and let's go to add design and let me find, let's go to an accent design. So there's my accent design. I'm going to make it bigger. Boy, howdy, do I have the big honking cursor today. So let's say I want to grab that section right there and I want to turn it into an applique. So that is going to be that lighter section. Let's look at, look at it in 3D. That's going to be the light section down underneath. Mm. Let's go with this instead. And go to our Tools tab and say Convert to Applique. It, notice how it does doubles. That's not optimal. And that's why I say it's design dependent. It's not going to do it as well here in BES as it will in PE Design just simply because of the nature of the beast. It's going to give you multiple things going around because it's trying to turn each of those pieces into an applique and they're rather large. Let's pick one that doesn't look thick so that we can see. Let's try the, let's try this guy. And let's, oops, it did not like that. But that's actually okay. It's telling me I've got too big of a satin and that's going to be those dots. So I'm going to choose the red here and go to tools and say convert to applique. You'll notice how it did both the circles and the outline not optimal. So if you're wanting to do that, what I would tell you is use your artwork tool everybody has the line tool so you could draw around this control key lets you make curves backspace takes away your last click evidently i want to make a curve on there twice it's not what i'm trying to do Double click when you, or excuse me, click and then right click when you get to the end and then convert that section to your applique. Now, I don't have a closed line, so I'm going to undo that. Grab that shape that I just drew and close that shape. Now, I convert that to applique and it's one continuous applique. If you need to edit the shape, you can do that after the fact. And it will automatically adjust it. So let's say I want this one to go to um, a cusp or a smooth. Right mouse click and that will smooth that section out. If I right mouse click here and say smooth again, I may want to adjust those points. Right mouse click and it updates it. So now that section is an applique. Then you could take out the red and not worry about it. You could basically copy this one. If you hold your control key down, it will duplicate. And then you could flip it on your arrange tab. Actually, no, on your tools tab. Oh, where is it? Arrange, flip. There you go. Horizontal flip and then rotate it into position. Or you could draw around it to make sure it's the exact size. And yes, I lost part of my eyes when I deleted that. So um, I was working with P Design 11. Um, 10 does not let you do the replace. Um, you, it, it, it does different, but you could do sections. You could convert it to outline and then you could do the applique. Divide by colors, convert to applique. Divide by colors, convert to outline and then do your applique. All right, so that's that. Now, um, let's see here. 
I went hunting and found something fun today. So that is the next part is what we're going to do. Uh, tell, tell you how to do a fringe stitch. Okay. I think I've done this before, but we'll do that since we're live. Um, it's going to be in P design because that's where you have the capability. And it doesn't matter which version of P design. So let's say you want the fringe on the bottom of your pot here. What you can do is grab your block punch tool and left click Doesn't have to be fancy here. Once you've done that, you need a running stitch or you need a stitch to go across it. So whether that be a running stitch or a satin stitch, I personally prefer a satin stitch because it will actually grab it and hold on to it. When you double click, you've got a satin stitch that's going to go over it and you can change that satin stitch width in your sewing attributes down to one. That will be a nice skinny line. Make sure that it's covering it. So if you're not sure, look in your stitch view here. And let's go back up and zoom in. And you can see how it's tacking that down. I would personally turn off your underlay. And then you'll notice how you've got a nice long stitch there. After you're done stitching it, you take your seam ripper around the back of the bobbin and just rip it out. And you'll have, you rip the bobbin thread out of the long satin stitch. And that does the fringe for you. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions before I go on. Does not look like it. Okay. So let's go back over here and I'm going to take you to the internet here. Creative Fabrica and I have a link here for you for this spring truck if you want it. So I, it is an affiliate link. So I would actually get a little, little bit of change off of this one. But the, this is, I thought this one was really cute. I went and did a search for spring today and I thought this one was really, really cute. I could be out of sync because of um, going to the internet here. And I can't, there's no way I can, I can't help that. All right. So here is the welcome spring that, that I downloaded and it came in as a DXF. So that meant I had to work with it someplace else. All right. Um, and luckily enough, once I downloaded it, Canvas Workspace will let me bring in a DXF file. So I'm going to delete this currently. We're going to go come up here and we're going to import from our computer or you can touch the SVG file. That's generally what I do. And you can choose the Welcome Truck 2 or let's do the DXF right here. There's a black and white version and then there is a color version. Let's see what the color does for us. Doesn't like me. Doesn't like me. Okay, so you're going to be ornery. That is why I used BES4, I do believe. If you have all of your power packs, when you go to import and import artwork, you have the capability of bringing in a DXF file. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose DXF. Here is the DXF file. When I open it, you'll notice there it goes. But you'll also notice that the color version had black parts in it. I didn't want that. So I deleted that. And let me turn off my banner here. So I deleted that. And I came up here and I went to import, import artwork, and I brought in the black and white version. And there we go. So I have a nice little clean black and white version, but you'll still notice I may have multiple parts and I didn't want multiple pieces. So you can tell that you have two of each of these 
not optimal. So let's go through here and delete and see what we've got. So that's good. That's good. I either had to delete the black and white or I had to delete this one. And so there's an X, there's the extra. And you, but you can tell that there, I mean, there are two of everything in here. And I just went through and got rid of the ones that I didn't, the, the duplicates. And it, it's showing me that there are two. As you look at it, you can see two of each thing. And so if you want to do this faster, hold your control key down and get rid of. The control key lets you skip. I'm not sure where I got to. Anyhow, you get the idea. Once you've done that, oops, see, that's not a duplicate. Once you've gotten your duplicates, or you can just simply click up right here on top of them, you can see they're heavier. So if it's a duplicate, it's a heavier item. Oops, that's not a dupe. And neither is that one. And all I'm doing is touching them and deleting. And if I delete one I don't like, undo is a girl's best friend. So here we go. And I'm not sure why it came in this way. I guess it's just the way the designer created it. Oh, there's not a dupe there. So there you go. I think all my dupes are done. Yes. So, oops. looks like I've got a couple more here. Nope. And I see comments popping up and I'll look here in just a second. But it was a stinking cute little thing. Now, looks like we're done with dupes. So, uh, Margie, are you the only one that can't do this, that can't hear me? Anybody else that can't hear me, let me know. Because otherwise, it's Margie's audio. All right, so now we've got it. We've got our duplicates gone. And you can come in and hold your control key down and pick the items that you want to color a certain color. So I'm going to make my leaves green. And I'm going to go in here and color this in the way it was on the actual item. And I'm just holding my control key to pick different parts. That's pink. And we're going to add one more pink right there. And then this one. I don't know what color it was. We'll make it our own color. How about orange? And then this one. And you could always pick these up in your sequence view window. Let's make it purple just for the heck of it. And then let's go down here. Did I miss one? Looks like I missed somebody. Nope, that must be a dupe. Okay, so now we need all of the little dots. And those are all centers, and we'll make those all yellow. All right, now let's go down here and look at the truck parts itself. We have, well, we've got Welcome Spring. Let's turn that into green. And then let's come back up here to the actual truck and turn it to a lime green. 
And that's kind of what you have in the original artwork, except for I do believe the Welcome Spring was probably black. You could pick it whatever color you want. You want a hot pink, make it hot pink. It's kind of cool. So now, since we're in BES4, this one can only be converted to either applique, but if you have Power Pack 1, you can convert it to a run. And, oh, it may be, it is monster size, so let me undo that. We can't actually stitch that out in that size. So let's do Control A again, and let's change the size of this to about, how about eight inches? So eight by four, that's much better size instead of 600 and something that we can't stitch. Now, if we go to our Tools tab and we convert it to Run, there you go. It also has made it to where, I mean, that that's your option. You have a run, you can change it to, from a single run to a bean stitch, which is a triple stitch or a half bean. You've got all of those options for that. And that'd be a quite a fun little item. And what I think would be fun, a lot of fun actually, is if you take markers, fabric markers, and color those petals in, that would be a nice, light, easy, quick design to stitch out. But let's say we don't have a power pack. What you can do with this now that we've resized it and made it to a reasonable size, if you have both PE Design and BES4, you can export this FCM file. Before I do that, I want to make, let's color sort it. Let's color sort so that everything gets in to where we're not having multiple crazy colors hidden somewhere else. So we can go up here and we can do export and you can export an SVG and you can export an FCM. Let's do both so you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to export the FCM file and we'll call this Welcome Spring. If I can type. And then let's do it as an SVG. You may only have the option of SVG if you have if you don't have a power pack. So that's why I'm doing actually you may only have FCM. I cannot type today. Okay, so back to P design. If I wanted to bring in the S SVG file. I go to import patterns from vector image. And let's see here. What did we call it? Welcome spring SVG and open that up. There is my design. If I want it to be colored in, I would select the part, come in, change it to a fill stitch and choose my color. We want that to be a green. So let's change it to a green. Uh, you know, I probably want my wheels to be black, so I would come in and, and change my wheels to black. Now, there also, you'll notice, it looks like I needed a whole sewing there for that one part. So, we'll have to figure out which part that is. And it is going to be right here. Let's see, where's the hole that needs to go? And actually, let's just turn that off to not sewn. There you go. Change it to not sewn and you're good. If you want to change those that color to black, you could certainly do that. Um, this is going to be part of your wheel. So you could come in and grab your wheels. That's not a wheel. I'm holding the control key down. Now let's go to our color tab over here and change that to black. So now that's all changed to black. You have your welcome spring. You can turn the fill stitch on for that by clicking select and changing that to a fill stitch or satin stitch. Let's see what happens with the satin stitch. 
and we don't want that to be that color. Let's make it pink. We do have a set hole sewing issue there. So that means somewhere in here, there's a section that I need to turn off. And I would want to reorder the stitching. So the, there's definitely a set hole sewing. So I might leave that as an under, as an, let's undo this a couple of times. You would need to set hole sewing for the G, the, the little part of the R here. So I, you know, you might want to play with that a little bit. And then you've got your flower portion that you could turn on. Let's turn this one on. And this is keeps going to that color. Well, we want that to be orange. So let's do region instead of line and make it orange. And let's do line and make it that orange. There we go. And then come over here and see your pink parts. Select them. Turn it to a fill stitch. You get the concept. Change, the line is correct. Let's change our region to pink. And look at what we've got here so far. It's a pretty quick and easy way to get things done. And I, I did like the design. You, you, you just kind of have to play with this one a little bit. But I'm not playing with it a ton, as you can tell. Change that to region. Change it to purple. And now it's golden. And once you're done with the whole kit and caboodle, color sort it and be, be done. Okay? Let's see here. Can I show a split demo on splitting letters to make it two colors? and separate them to add something in the middle. Yes, I can. We have probably enough time to do that. Oh, this design also could be used in Canvas Workspace now. Since we have created it, we can import from the computer. Where did I put that that I just did? Here we go. Here is... Oh. I put it in my Facebook Live file, Cindy Facebook Live. So there we go. I believe. Where did I save that to? New. No. Where did I save that to? Let's see. File, export, SVG. Where is it going? Okay. Spring truck. There's our S FCM, and here is our color. The color will come in as a color. So this could all be used as a cutting file as well. So if you want to do HTV, that this is a really cute way to do an HTV truck. And all of your colors are laid out there. Super simple and easy. Um, Molly Ann, you, depending on where things start and stop, so let me bring that back in over here. Hold on. Let's see. Let me just delete this. And let's see here. Import from vector. Oops. Import from vector image. Spring SVG. Okay. So... If you look at it right now, it's going to jump quite a ways. So one of the things that you would want to do is check and see where parts are going to start and stop stitching. So you can change your entry and exit points and you can reorder the design. Entry and exits. We've talked about this before. Um, but that, I mean, that's a good spot for that one to start and stop. Let's come and grab that little tool again and click on this guy. He's going to start here. Actually, he's going to start here and end here. That one's going to start and end there. So they're kind of going where you want them. That one, I would probably change where it starts and have it stop over here. It's a, depending or have it stop right here. 
depending on what you're going to have it stitched to. So, and depending on where it's going to go to next. And it's kind of showing you that. So if you pay attention to where things, what order things are in, and you can reorder them to make it the way you want it. So let's say we want to start with our big piece right there. Let's take it and reorder it to the beginning of that section. You want that one to be next. All right. So where's the next guy that we would want? This one. Let's move him up. You want that guy to be next. Then we would want, not that one, this one. Then you would want this one. And so it's, it's really a game of figuring out where things, where you want things to stitch. And I actually would want that one there and change your entry and exits. So that that's how you would change them here. If you are in BES, so let's go back and convert this back to a run. To change your entry and exits on these, it's a little different. You go in, you choose your edit shape tool. Your green is your entry. Your red is your exit. Okay. And I did not change that other one to a bean stitch a minute ago. This is a bean. And I just changed one section to it. But that's how you change your entry and exit. Green dot versus red dot. Let me zoom in so you can see that. So let's go to our tools tab again. Grab the edit shape tool. Come in here. And here's your green dot. Here's your red dot. So if you adjust those, that's going to change where it start, starts and stops. And that will minimize your jumps. It's going to jump. But sometimes you may want them longer so you don't have to manually trim. If this is less than five millimeters, it is not going to automatically trim. So sometimes you may want to say, hey, I want you to end there and I want you to begin here because I want that jump to be bigger so that it will force it to trim. And same thing in B and P design, sorry. Now, all of these are currently a running stitch. So if we wanted this entire design, let's do select all or control A to be a, um, all right, let's zoom out. If we want the entire design to be a, uh, let's select it, a triple stitch, which is your bean stitch, you go to this stitch up here up top, change it to triple stitch. Okay. And um, version 10 could do the exact same thing that we just did on this. Okay, Laurie, my version 10 workbook is where you would find the, the entire guide on how to use your version 10 software. They, a large portion of the videos that I've done, the same things will be available in 10, but there are things that will not be available, like decorative fills will not be available because that wasn't in 10. The ability to do appliques out of pre-digitized designs would not be there. I can, I can currently now select, so let me come over here. What am I trying to say? In 10... If I wanted to do an applique out of the word 10, I would need to convert it to outline first and then ungroup it and do it a letter at a time. Um, so I go to my home tab, select my letter, applique wizard and basically choose replace. You would do that for each letter. Okay. And you have to set hole sewing, a, a bunch of little things there if you have letters with holes. In 11, I can simply select the whole word and go to the applique wizard.
if there's a if it needs a hole you can create it and that's if you have like an an a that has an inside on it you would choose create an applique with hole sewing and it would automatically do them all at one time so there are some very interesting little differences all right how to do a split letter so let's say we want to do a for amanda And what you have to keep in mind is that you may not, it may not necessarily be what you are thinking because it, you'll have to work at it a little bit harder if, um, what am I trying to say? Depending on where you split it, okay? It may not end up being totally proportional. Well, let's see here. Let me find a letter that I want to split. Let's say we want to do this one. All right. So the first thing that you would do is, it's been a while since I've done this, so let me sit here and think about this for a minute. Convert to outline. All right. Once you have converted it to outline, wait a minute. Let's see if we can do this a little bit easier. Let me think this through. We're going to grab our shape tool and I'm going to draw myself a little rectangle here. A teeny tiny little rectangle. Let me have it. I'll make it as small as I can make it. And let's see if it'll let me do this. I want to, nope, not going to let me. Okay, so we let's convert it to block and see if it'll let us instead of outline. Now let me come here, hold my control key down, and modify overlap, remove overlap. There you go. Now you can del you can delete this or you can let, we need to ungroup this first. I'm gonna un actually it's ungrouped, so let's grab the top half of this. If you look at your plus sign, if you're not sure how to get it, you can come in and see what sections are going with what by, let's change the color of the A. Hold on. It's hard to see what I'm doing with that. Let's change our color to something else. How about we choose blue so we can see when our red lines are going around it. Where is that little red dash line? Don't see it. Oh, there they are. Okay. Just, okay, that's not a part I want. That is. You know what? I don't like this. We're <clears throat> Occasionally, we go back to the drawing board. And this is one of those times that we're going to do that. Let me move this little purple thing out of the way. I want to do it the old way. And this works, this would work in 10. All right, I'm going to convert it to outline. Then I'm going to move this over here. And I am going to remove overlap stitches. So come and grab it all. Modify overlap, remove overlap stitches interesting oh i know why wrong order gang move this behind the a now let's try it grab the a hold the control key down and grab the purple modify overlap remove overlap there we go now you can see my overlap is removed so i'm going to undo that and we'll take, we're going to ungroup this. And then we'll take the bottom two half, the bottom two sections. I just held my control key down. I'm going to use the down arrow on my keyboard to separate them. Once I've done that, I can then come in here and draw myself a line. 
So I'm going to hold my shift key down to draw a straight line. Double click on the opposite end. And you can turn that into whatever size you want it to be. And then I'm going to go to my Home tab, Arrange Copy, and do a Horizontal Mirror Copy. Bring your cursor down and see where that is in the center. Left click, and there you go. And then come in, oops, and grab your original little rectangle and delete it. Then you can go in and put in your text. Now, I would probably move move this over to the left a little bit so that it's more in line with that and move this one to the right a little bit just simply to make sure that that is in line with that and the easiest way to find that out is to take your line drawing tool and draw yourself a little bitty reference line there so you can see where it is you can get rid of it afterwards yeah i'm going to actually set it not to sew so you see the little dashed line if you want to, to be able to make sure you're lined up. Okay. Then simply come back in and type in your letter, your text. Press enter. And there you go. Did that, that answer your question? All right, guys, any other questions before we call it a day? Um, yes, no, maybe. Yes, crayons would work, too. Um, that That is another option for when you do outlines. Oh, I'm throwing, I'm throwing stuff down here. How do you get the dashed lines? You basically tell it not to sew, Cindy. So when I went over here, let me come back and draw that again. Line drawing tool. Change the line to not sewn and then draw your little line. And you'll see that it's a little dash line and it won't sew. So you could leave it up there if you want to. Um, but I mean, that that is up to you, but you can see that they're there. So you could zoom in and look at it and see if you like it. So you can see that there's my line. I, you know, I might need to move this one over just a little bit. So I could use my little arrow key and move it over a hair. Oh, went too far. That that looks good, and that one's actually very right on. So just kind of, it's just kind of one of those that you play with. Um, and that is, you know, guys, sorry you get to see me play and to say, oh no, I don't like the way I did that. Sometimes it takes my brain a little bit of time to check check back in when it's been a while since I've done something. You could also have turned the basic A itself into an applique. Um, you could, so right here, if you want a satin, you're wanting this as a satin, you can come in here and change it from sewn to a zigzag outline. Make sure you turn on the whole part of it as well. So you can have your satin border around it. If you don't want this part stitching, you need to do it a, little, a different way. So I'm going to undo until I get that outline off. If you don't want it to stitch underneath here, I would copy this section. Control C. Copy. Control C. Paste. Control V. Uh, oh, fiddle D. We got to copy the hole too. So let's grab this whole kick and poodle. Copy. Paste. Okay, so now you see that we have that and turn it from not sewn to a zigzag stitch and then turn off the fill, say not sewn to the fill. So now once you've done that, you can come in here and zoom in and select your point tool and click on that outline. Right mouse click and say split at point. Go to the opposite side, right mouse click, and split it at point. Then when you look at it, you should see, I'm going to hit my plus sign here. See that little line right there that just got split off? Select that, move your cursor in, and delete that. You would do the same thing to the little bottom section. So I'm going to grab this piece, select it, go to my select point tool, right mouse click, split at point, 
right mouse click on the opposite side, split it point, come grab it, select it, and delete it. Do the same thing to the last one. Select, select point, right mouse click, split it point, right mouse click, split it point, come to the plus sign. If you, if you have a plus sign there, come to the plus sign, select that little line, move your cursor into the design area and press delete. Then move this up to sew where you want it to sew. And that would take care of those overlaps. Okay. So that, that is, that gets you in those overlaps. If you want these to be wider, come into your sewing attributes and increase the width. Right now they're at one millimeter. So if you want them wider, you can increase that width. All right. Any other questions before I say goodbye today? So if you wanted the Creative Fabrica item, the, that is the truck. If you are looking, if you want to do a membership subscription to be able to use any of their artwork and use it commercially, that is the affiliate link for that. So both of those are affiliate links. I'd appreciate it if you do go there to use my affiliate links. Um, other than that, Let's see here. Uh, workbook. I will do a coupon code. Let me find it. DIG 10 is for the version 10 workbook. LET4 is for the version uh, for the BES4 workbook. Um, I will have to put make those comp those coupons active. OK, they are not currently active, so I'll have to go in and, and make them active. All right, guys, you all have a great rest of your week. Um, if you're on spring break, have a good spring break. If you're not, have a good work week. And I will see you all next week. Uh, wait a minute. I work on a simple four patch in BS4. Save it on an old sheet. Uh, it really depends on the way your brain works. So I will go, I mean, I will do it consecutively until I get the one that I like, and then I'll put final on it and get rid of the rest of them. But there's really not a, um, there's, it, it's all up into the way your brain works. I, I mean, that, that sounded like excellent English that I just up into. It, it really is dependent on the way your brain works. Um, some of us, I mean, and then I forget to go about, renaming so sometimes i you know it just depends if i have to go back and rework on it then it gets a number two on it the the original is just the first name then if i've got to go back and rework it it's the second name but when i get to the one that's good that i like that i like the stitch out then i put final on it so that i know that is what i did this is the one i like and i'm done uh someone asked me a question about splitting applique designs i uh, through my through the my business page it would be good um if you email me that file that you were talking about and kind of explain whether you're wanting to split the applique itself or if because i don't personally i don't think that's going to work very well the reason i say that is because it's going to stitch one half it's going to go over and stitch after you finish it you're going to move it on to the next section and then it's going to start stitching over on top of the first half, depending on whether you've cut your fabric or not. You're, I mean, it. I can see that being a mess. OK. Oh, and somebody asked about cutting and I haven't had a chance to try this out this week. I've been I, I've got a, a, a product I'm working on. So I've been working on that. But they wanted to know about cutting um, sewn together blocks with this scan and cut, I would say the rotary auto blade and your standard mount would be the way to go on that. I think that would, that would be the way to go. An asterisk would work as well, Cindy. Like I said, it's all up and uh, up to what your, how your brain works. Mine is final. <laughs> that means I don't have to go back and do it again. Okay. All right, guys, anything else? If not, then I'm going to say goodbye for the day and you all have a great day. I will try to remember what I talked about today to go back in and change the descriptions. That is always my challenge. <laughs> all right. 
be sure to send in questions before Tuesday or before Monday. It does help me to be able to prepare a little bit better. Otherwise, I kind of go off on tangents and do other things. And so for those of you in the Education Connection, remember that Heather and I are going to do a live this week on Thursday. We are debating on whether to do it to a private uh, private YouTube place. Um, so you may you may get a different link than what I've already posted in the group. All right. Y'all have a great rest of your week and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.